morning, everyone. It is 7 o'clock here in Canyonland, USA. Hey, Aaron. Mom still has not heard from you. Will you just call her, please? I'll talk to you soon. And this morning, on the boulder, we have a very special guest, Aaron Ralston! Oh my gosh, it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hey! You lost? I'm a guide? What do you say? <laughs> See, I'm something of a big and hard hero. All you have to remember is that everything will be okay. Aaron Rawson's story to begin with? I heard about it when it happened in 2003. I was in, I live in London, mm -hmm. but it's a global story. It's like the Chilean miners. It just was everywhere, the story. And I was fascinated by how it developed. And I remember waiting for him to do the press conference, which he did at the end of his hospital stay. And then I read his book in 2006, and I went to meet him and to ask his permission about whether we could make a film of his story. And I had a very particular take of how to do it, and it was the version that you see on the screens now. And he, at that time, he didn't want to make it like that. He wanted to make something more of a documentary base with him in it and things like that. And, and I can understand that because he wanted to sort of keep control of the story and you hear terrible things about Hollywood and what it does to people's real life stories. But then three years passed, we had a big hit with Slumdog and I think that reassured him about what kind of filmmaker I was. And he was much more open to the idea and we, and we get, we wanted to use the advantage that Slumdog had given us to make a difficult story. Because the prospect for a studio of this story, a guy on his own for six days and then he cuts his arm off, is just like, we're never going to be able to sell that movie. Having worked on it now for a year, it's one of the most extraordinary stories that I've ever come across, you know, as a, as a reflection of ourselves in some way. Yeah, it truly, truly is, and obviously it's completely different from Slumdog Millionaire. What made you decide to take this on as such a challenging film to make? I think it, the contrast seemed uh, uh, a very positive thing, because it would be a big change. You wouldn't be making Slumdog 2 or, right. you know, <laughs> you know, it was like, and so, because to go from the, the chaos of Mumbai to mm -hmm. this solitary guy on his own in this canyon. But it's, um, it has some similarities to Slumdog, weirdly, which you sort of realise as yeah. you're making it, which is that, like Slumdog, it's about a guy against impossible odds that somehow you will pull through, through fortitude and courage and belief and, and in this case, an acceptance that we're all bound together in a way that isn't lonely, that despite the fact that he's in the loneliest place in the world, it begins and ends with people. And at the end, he makes his way back to people and it's him acknowledging their importance in his life that helps him towards grace, which he achieves at the end of the film and allows him to cut his arm off. Right. And allows us, I think, to tolerate watching it because it's a kind of thing that normally would be intolerable to watch, but you think he's got to go through this now to get out of there and to get back to something that's much more important, which is, you know, life going on and, and, and freedom again. What was it like working with Aaron? With Aaron? Yeah. He's lovely, actually. He's very super bright, very meticulous, very detailed, mm -hmm. constantly giving you notes about the most <laughs> weird things like the colour of your shoes or... like the. So we watched the movie. When he, when he saw the movie, it was overwhelming for him. I think he was like... He was in yeah. tears and it was like... <laughs> 
there was all this going on. And I said, when he calmed down, I said, Aaron, have you got any notes for me? Because we were, we, were um, we were still cutting and, you know, it was a test screening. And he said, yes, I have got a note, he said. He said, you know when he chains up his bicycle at the beginning in the desert? He said the bicycle was way too clean. It would have been much dustier than that. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I couldn't change it. And he was right, I was annoyed, because he was right, of course. Um, but those are kind of, he's very, you know, he's very detailed. And you, and you see that in the, his story, of course, is that as soon as he gets trapped, after his initial anger and physicality to try and get out of there, he organises his equipment. And it's like he's very precise and trying to work his way out. He was an engineer, he was an Intel engineer, you know, so he, was, so he has that application. That's the way he thinks, you know. You were quoted to have said, I want my films to be life-affirming. How has creating 127 hours affirmed your life? I think I, it's, people sometimes say to you, uh, to me, are you political or what your beliefs and things like that. This contains one of my fundamental, absolute beliefs I hold very, very dear, which is that um, it's not about superheroes or that kind of individualism. Um, what he learns in the canyon, which is that he learns to appreciate the people that have loved and supported him in a way that he thinks he hasn't truly, he's neglected that to do that. Uh, that thing that binds us together like that is absolutely fundamental to the life spirit. The life spirit is not about the individual's courage, the will to survive as a solo individual, it's meaningless. It's the fact that we all share it and that you acknowledge that you're part of this group, really. Um, and that all you can do is live life decently and pass it on. You know, it's very short what we do and that's what we're here for really, to do that. And um, I believe that very, very fundamentally and the film is sort of about that. It begins with him running away from people and it ends with him swimming back to people really and being embraced. It doesn't change him completely, he's still a climber, you can't change some instincts. But he does appreciate the pain that he put people through and that how he has to heal that in order to be able to live his life more fully go going forward, you know. You really, really captured the beauty of human connection and we just wish you the best of luck with this film and thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today. Cool, thank you very much. Yeah.